following that, we can we will move on to the slightly more specific matters regarding uh, site ST thirty five and H fifty nine. Are we are we all ready? Okay. So, F firstly, um, so you you've got uh, the uh, the answers to your questions initially set out in our in our in our paper. Um, I'll just make two points. Uh, firstly, we have an ongoing issue uh, with DIO over Queen Elizabeth Barracks, as you know. We have been, uh, a detailed uh, shadow appropriate assessment was provided fairly recently, and we'll need to look at that and respond to it in, in due course. Obviously, we haven't had time to do that. I'm going to ask uh, for some clarification on the, on the mitigation issues in a, in a moment. Um, the second point uh, I ought to mention is um, uh, looking at the matter afresh. It's, it's clear that there's been a there's, there's a need, as I said in opening, just to revisit the need for appropriate assessment for three of the other sites which uh, were screened out. But I think I think we forgot people over wind at some point, and so we need to revisit those because they have potential impacts on the. Uh, on the uh, uh, on the SAC, but they are more distant. Uh, they are have their own uh, alternative recreational space available, ST8, 9, and 14. Um, but we do need to provide you with a revised HRA uh, in order just to make sure that we don't fall into people over wind uh, issues. Um, the it's not anticipated there should be any particular difficulty with those sites, but nonetheless, we want to make sure that you've got chapter and verse on them in due course. Just so we are clear then, um, there's a possibility that, that needs to be looked at that um, someone somewhere along the line forgot people over wind. Yes. Um, and so you, you, you want to look at that again. We want to make sure that you have got what you need. Yeah. So that if you approve the soundness of the plan, with or without modifications, the plan can be adopted lawfully. Of course, the, the requirement to comply only arises at the point of adoption. It's a process issue, therefore, and can be resolved. And we will seek to resolve it before the phase two sessions. I've just discovered that when I keep my microphone on it, 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 it quietens you, Mr. Elvin, which I, th I, I thought was a good thing. <laughs> I'd, I'd, been, I'd been led to believe it was only Mr. McCormack's gift that he had that side of the room and I had this, but uh, anyway, that's um, an early Christmas present. Um, <laughs> Are you wanting one next? So... Um, Yeah, in, in, in terms then, th this is about in combination effects, is it? Is that? Yeah, no, it's, it's to do with recreational, the same as, it's about, it's about those, in those in those proposed housing developments being likely to go to the common and surveys suggesting that they, they might do so. Therefore, there's a risk applying the precautionary approach. Therefore, it should at least be assessed. We don't think it's an issue for the reasons it was screened out, but it needs to be done as an appropriate assessment. As Mr. Justice Dove made clear in the Canterbury decision earlier this year, it may be that the screening, in fact, doesn't the appropriate assessment adds nothing to the screening process, but we need to do that exercise to make sure that you can have that confidence. Okay, thank you. In, in which case, can I just um, ask uh, for a, a summary of the position on, on our views on the mitigation? Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Bernie Fleming. Uh, I'm a freelance ecologist uh, working for Fleming Ecology uh, and I um, was the author of the HRA. I think this is going to be a bit of a double act between myself and my colleague here. If you want to introduce yourself, Derwin. I'm Derwin Liley from Footprint Ecology. I'm the, one of the directors at Footprint Ecology and author of the Visitor Survey Report. Okay, picking up on the cue from Mr. Elvit and, um, and yourselves, you'd like 
us to talk about me to get would you like us to return to the questions which we've already provided written answers for to confirm those or would you rather us that I, we I, I was thinking um, mr fleming you just focus on summarizing with mr lilly the uh, the issues in so far as it relates to queen elizabeth barracks and and do so relatively snappily i think i, 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 I think that would be agreeable to, to everybody yes yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> mr buley wants his say in due course of course Okay, I will try and be uh, uh, brief and to the point. The issue with QEB is that in an earlier version of the HRA, the council thought that it would be able to mitigate for any, the council had <coughs> identified likely significant effects and potential adverse effects on the integrity of the site, but was of the opinion on the basis of the evidence it had at its disposal at the time that it would be able to mitigate for those adverse effects and allow uh, consent for the, or that, con that allocation to be adopted. Following consultation responses from Natural England, who raised doubts <coughs> about recreational pressure as a consequence of the additional, additional housing numbers in pro clo such close proximity to Strensel Common SAC. The council commissioned a visitor survey carried out by Derwin Liley and others, which produced a new body of evidence. Uh, his company, Footprint Ecology, are market leaders in this type of assessment and produced strong, we would say compelling evidence that cast doubt on the, the mitigation measures put forward by the council. Fol being mindful of as being at an, at, a, at an appropriate assessment stage, we had to take account of Natural England's uh, Natural England do have a similar view to when they received the visitor survey. They too were unconvinced by the mitigation measures put forward. Given that we had to take account or to have regard to Natural England's views at this stage and by the strength of evidence produced in the report and mindful of the precautionary principle which is embedded in law in the Habitats Regulations that unless we could ascertain that an adverse effect in the integrity of the site could be avoided, that the only option was to remove the QEB allocation from the plan. We had considered the policy as it stood, included uh, what we regarded was standard mitigation practices, which one could hope which one could have confidence in that they would have an effect at reducing the pressure, but overall we didn't think that they could remove the threat or the risk of an adverse effect. And, sorry. Yeah. I've finished. Yeah. Uh, of course, the, the legal test at the appropriate assessment stage is that there is certainty beyond reasonable scientific doubt. Um, can I ask Mr. Uh, Billy to just explain what what the footpath user surveys threw up certainly um the survey work we undertook which is in an appendix to excyc 14c um was entirely in line with the work we've done at other european sites across the country and the evidence used to underpin other strategic mitigation approaches and um, evidence base for local plans and that visitor survey work was undertaken in September and August 2018. We conducted 199 interviews. And overall, we uh, recorded an estimated level of use of around 173 people visiting the common per day, 17.2 uh, groups of people per hour. 73% of interviewees were with a dog. Uh, so high levels of use by dog walkers, um, and 54% of those dog walkers were visiting daily or on most days. These kind of uh, access patterns and the recreational use is, is, I'm sure, will be familiar. It's some of the issues with 
lowland heathlands and recreation pressure. And when we looked at the distribution of housing and the distribution of our visitor survey postcodes, we were able to estimate the uplift that might occur, the percentage increase in access that might occur as a result of new development. And those estimates enabled us to come to, a, well, to an estimate 24% increase in use as a result of the housing in the plan within 7.5 kilometers. However, of that 24%, 17% 17 of, of that increase, 17 percent of the increase was associated with ST35. And the point is that development so close to European sites has a very particular impact and a very high level of recreational use. So having identified that level of increase and flagged, flagged <coughs> that to the local authority, um, and in paragraph 10.5 of the visitor survey report, we highlight that it would be difficult to rule out adverse effects for developments that are very close, and in particular we were focusing on ST35, for which the report raises very grave concerns. And uh, why did you reach the conclusion that the amount of space being provided would be inadequate to provide substitute recreational space? Uh, one option for mitigation, uh, the challenges with development that is so close is that the ranges of the range of mitigation options are, are very much more limited and much likely to be less effective and the pressures are so different and so great. One of the um, mitigation options is alternative green space and as I understand it, DIO have suggested that 10.44 hectares might be, uh, would be possible. Um, that level of space doesn't fit with the, the, the kind of use we were seeing on Strensel Common, whereby the average walk within the SAC was 2.5 kilometers, that's the median distance. And to fit in a median walk of, of 2.5 kilometers, you need something around 40 hectares, you need a significant space. That 40 hectares is assuming a rectangle, which would have lengths of 625 meters. Uh, sorry, a square with even lengths of 625 and you walk around the perimeter, that square would have an area of 40 hectares. So to accommodate the kind of space and also the feel that people visiting Strensel Common are looking for, 52% of the interviewees were drawn to Strensel Common and for the recreational use because of the, the wild feel. <coughs> Thank you for that uh, a, a summary of, uh, of the findings. Uh, um, I suppose it, it sort of comes down to the, the natural England concerns that, that, that were raised as well in terms of, um, I just want to get an understanding of how the councils moved from the initial mitigation measures that it identified as being acceptable to them not being acceptable. Uh, obviously, there's further survey work that's been done on there. Um, I, I think you probably outlined the, sort of the reasons why that was. Um, I'm just wondering if there's, if there's some, uh, some sort of halfway point in between the two that could probably be looked at. But I'm going to, before I move on any further than that, it might be worthwhile getting the views of uh, the DIO. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I'll, I'll make my observations in English. If, if anyone wants to ch spell check them by reference to Spanish spell check later on, I'd be, I'm, I'm open to that. But, um, a, a couple of just quick points. I mean, this topic is obviously, I think this is well acknowledged now, a, a, an exception to the direction you gave earlier <coughs> about today being non-site specific. This is inevitably a site specific topic. I think that's well recognised. Certainly question 1.11. Secondly, I, I'm in the slightly odd position here of submitting to you uh, that the submitted plan is sound in circumstances where the council is the one that's saying now it's not sound. Now, that's where we are. But it is, the council does have to show you that the plan is not sound. Uh, thirdly, just in terms of the structure of what I'll say, um, unless you tell me differently, I'll, I'm going to stick to the structure pretty much of the questions, 1.10 and 1.11, uh, and I'll take them, unless you want me to break up after dealing with 1.10, I'll just take them 
together and deal with the, all, all that at once, and then we can see where, see where we are. So in terms of question uh, 110, um, there are four questions. I'm not really going to say anything about point D. Um, point B is pretty important. That's the question about whether all mitigation measures have been considered as part of an appropriate assessment. But what I want to, I'm going to subsume what I say about that in my response to point B of question 111 because there's a big overlap. So under 110, I, I just want to focus on points A and C and then I'll come to the uh, QEB specific issues under 1.11. So question A is, and, and there's been some acknowledgement, I think, just this morning of the points that I want to make about this. The question, point, point A is, have mitigation measures been taken into account at the screening st stage, and if so, why? There is no dispute about that in relation to my client's sites, that's to say ST35 and H59. Uh, mitigation wasn't looked quite properly, wasn't looked at at the screening stage, that's why they were screened in, and it was decided it was necessary to carry out an appropriate assessment. Um, and that's entirely proper and correct, because, of course, it is not lawful, see people overwind, to take account of mitigation measures at the screening stage. However, and as I say, we've just heard some acknowledgement of this, but I just want to drill down a little bit. In light, in particular, of the statements of common ground that you now have, between the Council and Natural England, that's Common Ground Statement 5, uh, and the developers for sites ST8 and ST9, that's Common Ground Statements 1 and 6, it, it's quite clear that either mitigation uh, was taken into account at the screening stage or it needed to be, and Mr Elvin has, I think, fa very fairly acknowledged that. Uh, but I just want to uh, show you why that is. Um, in the Natural England, this is Common Ground Statement 5, um, in the statement of common, this statement of common ground, uh, it, having acknowledged the 7% 7 7 visit, visitor increase by reason of allocations other than ST35, uh, it, it, the agreed position is uh, uh, recorded as follows. Recreational impact, in square brackets, on the common from other strategic site allocations, so that's other than the DIO sites, as identified in the Strensel Common Visitor Survey, 7%, can be mitigated through site-specific policy and their bespoke development principles. And then the developers for ST8 and ST9, the, the wording is identical, the outcomes of the updated HRA are accepted for ST8, acknowledging the site forms a component of an identified recreational uplift on Strensel Common. Uh, the residual visitor pressure for Strensel Common SAC can be mitigated through policies in the local plan, dot, dot, dot. So it's completely clear that the basis upon which it is said that those site allocations are acceptable in relation to uh, the, the common is by reference to mitigation. But if you please... and. The, the relevant paragraph is 3.69 of the updated HRA. It's also... Just over the so sorry, yes. So it's the updated HRA, it's document EXCYC14C. The paragraph on this is 3.69. That reaffirms the approach taken in the earlier HRA, which is that um, those allocations can be excluded at the screening stage. Now, if you put those two points together, you've got an unlawful, uh, you've, got a, you, you've got policies which cannot, at least as at today, be lawfully adopted because of the people overwind approach to mitigation. Now, I'm not raising those points uh, because I or my client have any ax to grind about those site allocations. I'm gonna show you in a minute. We say, actually, that there's an acceptable way through it. But it does highlight two quite important points, which I think uh, I suggest you need to have in mind when you look at this issue overall. The first is that it highlights, highlights we say, uh, an inconsistency of approach uh, by, and I should say, by, by both Natural England and by the Council, as between the DIO sites and these other sites. Because even on the footprint numbers, the increase in visitor numbers from the other site allocations is 7% or thereabouts. The increase from 
uh, ST35 is 17%. Yes, it's larger, but it's not a, diff difference of, a complete diff difference of order or of kind. And it's a pretty stark position, therefore, to find that certainly on the Council's current approach, those, um, those allocations were dealt with at the screening stage, no likely significant effects. Whereas in relation to the DIO site, yes, larger numbers I accept, but not that much larger. It's, be it's being maintained you cannot even deal with it by way of mitigation following a full appropriate assessment. That doesn't get me home. It's not a complete, uh, it's not an impossible conclusion, but it's pretty stark and pretty odd, and a point that I ask you to have in mind. The other point to make um, is that all of this just reinforces a point that I want to come back to in just a moment after I've said something about in combination effects, which is certainly as at, at the moment, we say SS19 is not merely a lawful policy in habitats terms, it is a necessary policy to make the plan as a whole compliant. And that's because SS19 is the only policy in the plan which contains mitigation measures which are directed specifically at Strensel Common. It's the only policy in the plan, it's the only way you can secure mitigation, which is, if you like, on site, that's to say, on, co on the common site, because, of course, DIO is the landowner of the common, and it has a range of, an ability to put in place a range of measures that go be beyond just pu putting some green space on the development site in question and to secure much more substantive and effective measures, we say. And, and, and if you just think about the position now, bearing in mind what Mr. Darwin has now said, you cannot conclude, as at today, that um, it would be look, the plan is compliant in relation to policies, certainly ST8 and ST9, in circumstances where there's an acknowledgement, I think by Mr. Elbin, but certainly in the statement of common ground, that there, needs to, there has to be an appropriate assessment of those, those sites, and there hasn't been. I just want to say something briefly about, on point C, on in combination effects. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, there's an overlap between this point and the last point. Um, I've referenced the fact that on the footprint report figures, you've got an increase of around about 7% as, a, as against seven, around about 17% in visitor numbers from <laughs> the other allocations as against the um, uh, QEB allocation. In, in fact, the position is potentially worse than that because as part of the exercise we undertook, we, under, we commissioned a further visitor survey that's the PCP visitor survey, which is appended to somewhere in our, to, to our hearing statement on matter one. That reached by, by no means completely different overall conclusions. They both assess a, a, an increase in visitor numbers by, by reason of the allocations in the plan taken as a whole in the region of 24%. But the breakdown between them is different because on the PCP analysis, it breaks down, you get about a 10% increase by reason of the other allocations and a 14% increase by reason, of, um, by reason of the QEB allocations. So actually, the difference between them is not that great. QEB is still greater, I accept that, but frankly, not, not that different. Now, obviously, I'm not going to ask you today or as a result of uh, your... your uh, your, this examination process to definitively prefer the D PCP figures to the footprint figures, but frankly, I do say you can't disregard them, disregard them, or definitively uh, prefer the footprint to the PCP figures. And if the PCP figures are correct, then the impact in terms of visitor numbers by reason of the other sites is somewhat greater, and the impact by reason of my client's site is somewhat less. And the mismatch that I've referred to already between screening out on one level or just having on-site provision on the other sites uh, and um, the really very detailed mitigation measures we, we, we're envisaging under SS19 is even more stark. And just by way of reference, if you want an easy way into those figures, paragraph, as you have picked up, we have prepared, and it's appendix two to our hearing statement, a shadow HRA document. Um, I'll come back to that in, in a moment, but just for this point, paragraph 6.7.74 
gives you a br the breakdown of the footprint visitor numbers as against the, and it will take you back to other, more detailed analysis, but the footprint uh, visitor number increases as against the PCP visitor number increases. So if you think about where you are right now, the position is, um, you can, we say, you can and should conclude that policy SS19 is sound. I'll say about why that is in a moment by reference to visitor numbers. But you cannot conclude, we submit, that the plan is sound or legally compliant under the habitats regulations in relation to those other site allocations. You just can't. Uh, and I think Mr. Elvin pr pretty much acknowledges that. Now, what Mr. Elvin says is that um, <coughs> what Mr. Elvin says is, well, okay, we'll, we may have, we may have uh, forgotten about people overwind, um, uh, and um, we, we'll do the further detailed work. <laughs> Slightly problematic, frankly. Um, but uh, whether it's uh, uh, to err as human, I'm not su suggesting otherwise. But <laughs> but there is but but in this case, but in this case, the council has been very human. <laughs> um, so. In any event, whatever the reason, he says, well, we can, we can do the extra work and you'll be, in a, you'll be placed in a position where you'll be able to conclude that it's all okay. Well, with respect to him, first of all, I'm entitled. I, I, I'm not going to second guess the outcome of those. I'm entitled to say, right now, you can't find that the plan is sound, sound in relation to the other allocations. Or le Sorry, I should say, you can't find that the plan is legally compliant in relation to the other allocations. Uh, 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 and, and I'm also, I think, entitled to say that neither you nor even Mr. Elvin or the council should speculate about what the outcome of an appropriate assessment would be. Because what we would say about that is that if you do the work, certainly if you do the work on the basis of the PCP figures, for example, or, not, or at any rate not discounting the PCP figures, um, the, appropriate, the, pro, the, the right conclusion is, yes you can mitigate, uh, increase uh, visitor access to, to the common, whether, whether from QEB or, or, whether from, um, uh, or whether from these other allocations. But you can do so because under SS19, you've got a mechanism for ensuring that all sorts of measures are put in place, which go well beyond what is provided for in the re relevant policies on those other sites, or which is capable of being provided for. It's not capable of being provided for because DIO is not a landowner in relation to those sites and can't be expected to sign up to Section 106 agreements and the rest of it in terms of providing those other measures. But there's another po last point about this on question 110, and it's this. Because we have, um, we have uh, done the analysis, and as Mr. Elvin points out, uh, the question in terms of appropriate assessment is, is what, has, has the appropriate assessment taken place by the time of adoption? We have provided, by way of the uh, mitigation measures report, on the one hand, and the shadow HRA, which takes that forward, both of which are appended to the hearing statement. I should say the mitigation measures report has been with the council for a, a number of weeks, I think about a month now. We have provided the analysis, which we say entitles you to conclude, whether in relation to QEB, or in relation to the other sites, that, um, that you can rule out adverse impacts. But that is because, and as a result of, the measures which will be uh, put in place pursuant to SS19, and therefore you just can't, you, 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 can, you can only reach that conclusion, certainly on the material currently available, if SS19 re remains in the plan. So the submission I make to you is not only is SS19 legally compliant, but it is required to make the plan as a whole legally compliant. And just a, a reference point just to make that good.